Right, hey guys, so today we've got a mystery, or at least one proposed to me by a guy called Colin who emailed me way back in March. Sorry, Colin. Um, I get quite a few and sometimes I miss some of them, but um, I might even have replied to you. I'm not sure if we've spoken about this, but Colin says, and sent me some links to, which I'll put in the description, but you can see his email now. I'll just blank out the, the email addresses, but um, Colin says that um, lots of people are using these relay modules with ESP8266 boards, the node MCU type. And he's witnessed in videos and perhaps in his, uh, his own experience that when the boards boot in their boot cycle, they're dropping some of their pins low. This relay board requires a low signal to turn on each relay. Let me just draw actually what's going on in this sort of relay schematic here. Um, it'll probably be easier if I do that. So in each one of these relays, if we imagine a relay just like a big switch that needs some power to turn it on, this is the way that they do it. So to separate, in fact, these boards, they claim to separate uh, your power that goes to the relay from your microcontroller, but it doesn't really. If you, if you use this pin here, which connects the, uh, the JD VCC to VCC, which is five volts essentially on here, then it, you don't disconnect from these relays. So anything catastrophic that goes through this relay could then go through to your microcontroller, unless you use separate power supplies for the power for the relays and the power for um, the microcontroller. So really it just ruins the point of having these optocouplers really. So yeah, those are optocouplers. Sorry, I didn't actually say that. So you're, you go through an optocoupler in order to start one of these relays. Now, um, an optocoupler is basically a box like this with an input or rather an output, an input over here, which is an LED. So how does that go? Like little arrows like that? Yeah, I've probably not given myself enough space to draw the other side. But from that um, optocoupler, we come down to another LED, which is on the external of the board, so just here or here or here or here. So another LED that comes out. And that one goes to the IO pin on your microcontroller. And this one over here goes through a, what looks like a 100 ohm resistor to five volts. Now on the other side of um, this uh, optocoupler, I've not really got the space to draw it now, but I will attempt to all the same. We have, uh, they should really come in a little bit so I can draw this, but it's sort of like a, I guess it's like a transistor like that. And then the ray, <laughs> it actually has little lines coming off it. So, oh, that's a really bad drawing but it's a transistor just here, essentially. And it's activated by this diode. So light sensitive transistor, I guess. I don't know all the correct terms for this. I've never used them before, um, but that's essentially how it works. So in order to turn this on, you have to sync the current from both of these two uh, light emitting diodes. And so they're in series and the voltage you get out of here is about 2.8 volts, uh, which means you're dropping what one, two, three, no, not three, 2.2 volts, roughly. Hang on, that's four, two, five. Yeah, about 2.2 volts. So these are fairly like low forward voltage uh, LEDs, I guess. So yeah, you get 2.2 to 2.3 to 2.8, I guess, um, out of here. So we've got two diodes we're going through essentially. Now what happens in the boot cycle is that, uh, let me get rid of that now, that some of those pins on the microcontroller go low, which turns on, for a very brief period, turns on the relay. And that's a bit of an issue. Look at my fingers. <laughs> that pen is leaking. So Colin said he did some experiments on his breadboard and it, it didn't happen to him. I'm just rereading his email now. Um, but it looks like the ESP8266 switches the pins to ground while initializing. Now I couldn't verify that. My ESP8266 doesn't. Um, but he asked, can you think of a, a way to avoid this um, using some more components perhaps? Um, 
And yes, I can. I can think of a way of doing that. Now, what I would do is use a 74HC595, uh, which is a shift register. So I've got my little ESP8266 here. This is the ESP-12, it's a witty board. Unfortunately, all of my ESP8266 boards are rubbish apart from this one. None of them seem to work. So um, what I've got here is just a breadboard with two separate power lines, one for five volts, one for 3.3 volts. We wanna keep five volts away from the input and outputs of these um, ESP8266 pins. The output on here is 2.3 to 2.8, so that's fine. We just need to give it a signal as high or if not higher than that to stop it from slightly turning on. Now, if I wire all this up, so we need to have this, this is our output pin. It's on pin one of the 74HC595. We need ground just here, so we'll pop that in over here onto ground. Um, we've got The five volt line is just here. So let's pop that into VCC. Again, as I mentioned, we're sharing VCC with the relays. So they're gonna be powered by this board. Not ideal for an ESP8266 to be powering some relays, but we're gonna do it anyway. And then the Witty board does not break out 3.3 volts. So I'm having to use a via on the board to, uh, to take that out. Now, I think I've already bridged ground, so I don't need that. Okay, so the last thing to do is just to plug in my 3.3 volts up into the wire that's handily over there, and then plug in the board and we can see what it does. Actually, maybe the best thing is to just to take the shift register out of the equation for now. And so that's purple, blue, green, okay. So I can show to you that uh, this one doesn't seem to have any flickering on its output. So let's just throw that into pin 16. That one will do. And we'll put that into in three. Let's zoom out a little bit, shall we? That's better. And then we'll plug it in. Oh, incidentally, <laughs> before I begin, Colin said, um, when he sent this through, he said, hi David, hope you enjoy the chocolates as much as I enjoy your videos. He sent me, there were two bags of these, but a squirrel broke in um, and, now, <laughs> and now there aren't. Um, these are called Jazzies. They're amazing, I love them. So thank you very much, Colin. Um, remember that email concerning the word startup behavior with the remail, relay module. Maybe you can figure something out while having a hands-on. So thanks a lot, Colin. It has been really fun. I was trying this all last night. It was really, really good. Uh, where's my power bank gone? Ah, oh, it's right here. So I've got a little USB power cable. Let's plug that in. So this will be doing it now without the, without the uh, 74HC595 plugged in. And I just want to show you that um, it doesn't seem to display that behavior. So I'll just plug that in. We're looking for in three to go on. So it's the third one along this LED here. I've got nothing. You can see that the power's on. What I can do now is just put that onto a ground pin. So have I got a spare? Oh, no, but I have got a little jumper. So if I just pop that onto a ground pin, you can see that it comes on. You can probably hear it. It's quite loud. So we're looking for that little sound. Okay, and we don't have it. It doesn't display on any of the pins that I could find. So um, that one is relatively safe, I feel. Um, so mine doesn't. I don't know whether it's um, to do with a certain bit of firmware or what code you're uploading, but. So our future Dave here, don't be alarmed. I've only come back one day to show you that I've actually found this behavior in one of these microcontrollers. So I had this on order, it came through today. So I thought I would test it out and lo and behold, it actually has this kind of flickering behavior. So currently it is in a pin marked SDO. And if I unplug it and power it up again, can you see that? And maybe hear it, I'm not sure. But um, that pin there will flicker on and off. I don't quite know what those pins are. I haven't done enough really research into it, but uh, uh, one next to it, so 
I mean, SDO is serial data out in my mind, and then you've got SD1, SD2, SD3. So I don't know what those stand for. And they don't all but show the same behavior. So SD3 does nothing. SD2, uh, could it be serial data? Could it be the second TX line like TX1? Uh, SD1 is low. So it could be that that is a serial line, but that one certainly flickers. Let's try it on the TX and RX. Don't really want to be syncing a lot of current here. Nothing on RX, because that's usually high, isn't it? And then the same on TX. So it is still a bit of a mystery. Um, on mine, it doesn't display that. So let's pop that back into here and I'll show you what mine does with the 74HC595 and I'll explain why. So does anyone remember the code, the, uh, was it? I think it was purple, green, blue, right? Probably. There we go. And 3.3 volts it needs to go in as well. And if I just reset that, did I get it right? Sorry about that, had to go away and figure out what my wiring was for this. So I've forgotten the order of those very quickly. Anyhow, what's happening here is I'm using the shift register to turn on and off the first relay um, every 2.5 seconds. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna unplug this um, and then plug it back in again. So you can see that it doesn't come on immediately, it waits for this to initiate. Ta da See, nothing flickers. And the reason that is, let's just unplug this and move it out of the way and I can show you on a diagram. I love me a diagram. So there's our little opto-isolator. Opto-isolator, opto-coupler. Uh, honestly, I just made a few mistakes there so we're starting again, sorry. So anyway, this is our 74HC595. So 74HC595. I did that wrong again, anyway. So if I start drawing this chip out, it is a 16 pin chip, but I'm not gonna draw all of the pins. We don't need to see them all. So we only need the first pin which I've connected, which is Q1, and that is pin one. Um, down at pin eight over here, that one is ground. Uh, up at pin 16, we're gonna jump around a little bit. We've got 3.3 volts. This chip will run at 3.3 volts. Most people run it at five. It's a little bit more normal to do that. Um, and then the rest of the pins are uh, sort of useful, let's say. I don't mean useful. I mean, you have to have them in a specific way. So first off, we've got, um, pin 10 down here. So if I just skip up a little pin 10, so that one would be nine. Pin 10 is our master reset. And master reset goes to power on here. That stops the, um, the outputs going from going into like a high Z state, which is try output state, neither high nor low, high impedance kind of deal. Um, and then we've got pin 11, and pin 11 is our clock pin. So this is like the data clock. Um, so clock pin, and then that one's just going out straight to the microcontroller. So this is like, that's like having um, just a normal clock pin on, on anything that's like SPI type deal. Um, and on my microcontroller, that is going to pin, it's going to uh, 13 on the witty board, which is kind of like any kind of, what is like a feather or something. Then pin 12 is our latch pin. Now the latch pin is also sort of uh, the storage register data clock. Oh, I'm not writing that. Storage clock, <laughs> that'll do. Um, and that one's uh, going to which one? It's the... It's pin 14 on this one. Um, but we're doing something different with this latch pin. So not only is it going to pin 14, but we're also using a resistor to pull it low. 
uh, that's a 10k resistor and when it's pulled low that stops any data that's coming in on those pins from being clocked until this is pulled high um, so all of that data goes in it's not going to go anywhere until that's pulled high so that's how we stop it from flickering um, but it wouldn't wouldn't really anyway it's not it's very unlikely that it all flash around in the right sequence um, and then pin 13 is our output enable and that is going to ground and then the very last pin on here is pin 14 which is mozzie or it's just uh, serial data isn't it and for me that's going to what is it 15 12, 13, no, actually I've done one wrong, have I? Oh no, it's going to pin 12, I haven't done it wrong. Just looking at my little witty board over here, trying to figure it out from the very small sort of silk screen stuff on there. So that's what I'm doing to overcome the problem. So you pose me a challenge and that's what I've come up with. Now, I would really love to hear all of your guys' ideas, how you could avoid that situation if you've experienced it, because I can't replicate it. So it'd be great to hear if you've had a similar situation. But anyway, my idea was just to use the venerable 74HC595 shift register. Now, I think there are probably other things you could do, um, like have a some kind of capacitor timer deal where the pin has to stay high for a certain period of time or low for a certain period of time for this to then trigger. So you could probably do it with some capacitors and uh, transistors or MOSFETs or whatever. Um, and in fact, I'm not sure how much, how much um, current is coming out of these, how much you're gonna need to sync. You could probably figure it out from the voltage drop and from the 100 ohm resistor though, honestly. Um, if I knew my VIR, then I would do, or Ohm's Law. Anyway, that's what I've come up with so far, Colin. So thanks a lot for the sweets, really appreciate it. And I will um, play around with this board at some point. I need to wait until I get a, a different Node MCU thing, but um, I've gone about as far as I'm able to go. So if anyone's got any ideas on how you could tackle that kind of a problem, when pins bounce around at boot and they're connected to something which literally connects mains. <laughs> you don't want these things bouncing around. If you've got any ideas, I'd love to hear them. I'm sure there's um, lots of smarter ways to do this.